In this lesson, we'll cover the Revit user interface. So on my screen, I have Revit open, and I have a blank project open as well. With that project open, you can see the various parts of the Revit user interface. Starting at the very top in the upper left, you have the large R. If you click on the large R, this displays the basic functions such as save, opening, and creating new elements, including printing, and the list of things you just opened. To the right of that is an actual quick launch bar. Here, you can add or remove various icons to accomplish similar tasks, such as opening, saving, looking at a 3D view, even changing your line types. To control what's displayed here, there's a drop down to the very right. Now below that is the ribbon. And on the ribbon, you'll see various tabs depending upon the flavor of Revit you have installed, meaning Revit, Revit MEP, Revit architecture, or a combination of all three. For the most part, for this course, we'll use the functional commands on the architecture tab. So with that tab selected right now, you can see the various different elements to build things, such as walls, doors, windows, your columns, floors, ceiling, a roof, even curtain walls, meaning your glass paneled walls. And then in the circulation area, you have your stairs, your ramps, your railings. Then when we get into tagging rooms or defining a space, we have our room area where we can calculate that square footage in that given room. Openings are to the right of that for vertical openings through your floors or a dormer window or an opening in a wall. Now before we get started in the very beginning, we'll want to create a grid. That grid will dictate where our columns go and our foundation walls. That's in the datum area. The last area is work plane. This is primarily used for reference if you need to create a reference or a make-believe surface to place something on or dimension something to. Now there are other tabs too for various other elements inside of Revit. On my screen, I have a structure tab. This will allow me to build and place structural elements such as beams, structural walls, foundation walls, structural floors. Also, it will allow me to place footings or slabs. And there's a variety of other things as you look across the ribbon as well. To the right of that is systems. Now this is mostly MEP, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing, where I would be placing those mechanical, electrical, and plumbing systems into a structure. However, we're not going to cover that in this course, but I'm just calling out as to what that is. Another tab is insert. This allows me to insert in components or families if I currently don't have them, meaning a wall type or a specific type of door or window. I can load it from a library and use it in my project. Annotate is your annotation, your dimensioning, your callouts, your notes, your text, and of course, your tags for your windows, your doors, wall finishing, even floors. Analyze is a tab to let you look at the analytical aspects of your actual project. If you were placing elements in for structure, you could look at the analysis of loads on a floor. How much weight would that carry? Or inside of your HVAC system for the size of your building. To the right of that is massing and site. We'll mostly use the site components when we look at the site that our building is placed upon. So we'll be able to place our driveways, our parking lots, our trees, and our other landscape elements. But there's also a conceptual part of this too, where you could actually start to conceptually design a building by making a shape or a block and then slicing it into floors or vertical elements for walls. To the right of that is collaborate. This is if you were working in an office environment where you want to share your Revit project with multiple people so they could work on different parts of it at the same time. An example would be an architect, an engineer, or a structural engineer where the architect may be working on the architectural elements, the walls, the floors. The engineer may be working on the mechanical elements, such as the HVAC system or the wiring or the plumbing. And then the structural engineer may be working on the structure, the superstructure, the steel beams, the girders, the columns. And as they work, they may work at the same time. So this collaboration would allow them to actually see what each other is doing and work on the same model. View tab is the view tab, allowing me to create new views, such as your floor plans, elevations, section views, detail views. 
And manage is where we manage and set up all the configuration of what's in this project. So the settings for the project, the materials, different options. And the last tab is modify. This is if you want to make modifications. So moving things, copying things, rotating things. Now the other parts that are displayed on my screen are over on the left. The properties area where I'm moving my mouse will show me the properties of whatever you have selected. If nothing is selected, it'll show you the view that you're currently looking at in those properties. And I can see a variety of different things that are listed here. Below that is my project browser. This displays what views are currently created inside of this project and other things such as legends, schedules, sheets, and then other components such as families, things you're going to use to place in this model. Below that on the bottom of the Revit window is our view control area where we can actually change the scale, change the detail, meaning seeing more or less, change the actual visual style, let's say shaded or hidden line, and then if we want to see shadows, or if we want to crop certain views, or if we want to hide certain elements. Below that is an area to control work sharing. If you're working in that collaborative environment where you can actually look at different things that different people create. And then over on the right side, if you have this displayed, is a tool that you can actually use to rotate, zoom, and pan around your screen. So in this lesson, we looked at an overview of the actual Revit user interface. We talked about the different items, the different toolbars, the ribbon, and the different functional areas that you can use inside of Revit.